Welcome to another episode of the Chrissy Mayer Podcast. We are on iTunes, YouTube, Spotify, and SoundCloud. And if you're listening to us right now on iTunes, just go ahead and leave a five-star review. Just go ahead and do that. That would be great. I would love you for that. <laughs> for example, here's a really great review from Barons44. His review is called Sammy T Episode. The episode with Sam was a good one. See? Simple, direct, to the point. Thank you so much, Barons44. Uh, I'm a big fan of all these reviews. I'm also a really big fan of do 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 one soul. This, I'm so excited to talk about this new sponsor for the show. Um, this is great. I love. I mean, where was this product years ago when I was uh, traveling more? But basically, the idea of the one soul shoes is like you know when you tra especially women like we travel, we bring so many different pairs of shoes with us and it, it, they just take up so much room in your luggage so the idea of this it's like it's literally just one sole and a bunch of different tops that you snap on and off um it's the one sole is the original interchangeable shoe it began in 2001 it's an interchangeable shoe you can change hundreds of tops on different soles in a snap it's known for its comfort uh, and it's the perfect shoe for traveling because you only need one sole and a handful of tops. There are hundreds of different ones available, but one sole is known for the comfy neoprene top that fits your foot like a glove. You can even customize the tops with any photo or logo that you want. For example, they gave me this one of Trump that I might have to just hang up <laughs> as a memory. Um, yes, you, it's been featured on ABC. ABC News as the best product made in America and a season finale winner on Shark Tank. It's sold throughout the world and was created by a pharmacist named Dominique McLean Bartit. And for all my CMP listeners, if you go to onesoulshoe.com and use a promo code CMP, you're going to get 25% off of your whole order. These are super versatile shoes. I know maybe we're not all traveling as much as we would like just yet. But get these puppies before you do, because I feel like this is a solution. Like who, who doesn't want to be walking around a beach in these puppies? Get the, I feel like these are, well, this particular one is like a mom shoe to me. I love it though. I'm all about these. All right. Without further ado, I'm so excited to have this guy on the podcast today. I always love talking about astrology themes, but I love that this guy is going to just bring some notoriety to the topic because a lot of people like to blow off astrology like it's a BS. Uh, my guest here today, he is the host of the Comic Keys podcast. It's Dan Shukas. Hey, how's it going? How are you? I'm good. I wanted to just correct you. It's the Cosmic Keys podcast. Cosmic Keys? What did I say? I think you said Comic Keys, but... Uh, what? What? <laughs> it's cosmic. All right. I've literally have it written down here. Okay. I'm so sorry. I'm going to, no I'm not going to edit it out because I don't know how, but cosmic, of course. Yeah. God damn it. I'm starting off on the wrong foot already, Dan. It's all good. Thanks for having me. I'm really excited. And I love, I've started listening to your show last time we were on union of the unwanted and really enjoy what you're doing too. So props. Thank you. Yeah, see, there's there's so many. If you guys are listening, how many great guests have we had on this podcast because of Union of the Unwanted? And if you still haven't seen that show, I don't know what you're waiting for. Um, it's just a really good like garden variety of, uh, you know, we say that we're unwanted, <laughs> but just from the mainstream internet, like everyone's very smart or good in their particular subject. It's just that like they're not, um, you know. We're not uh, mainstream media friendly, I guess, is what they would say. But which Dan, is good because who is great. who likes the mainstream these days? It's like Nobody. the lame. It's as, it's as lame as it's ever been. It's the lame stream, and we're the cool stream. Um. So Dan, how long have you been interested in astrology? Tell us about the Cosmic Keys Swapcast. <laughs> Swapcast. That's what this is. The Cosmic Keys podcast. Um. What kind of drew you to this? you know, area of study. So, um, it's kind of a, well, astrology itself. Um, the first time I got a birth chart reading was back in 2013. And I had, I was, I've always been really into spiritual things and had some kind of spiritual experiences. Um, at the very end of my time in college, I got really into 
sort of just the esoteric subjects which astrology fell under um but i got a reading in 2013 and it it like really resonated and really kind of changed the course that i was on um I really learned astrology kind of in a non-traditional way by listening to a lot of podcasts where they would give month ahead forecasts. So my way of learning astrology is kind of real time, like knowing where the planets are at any given time and um, kind of building from that. So I, I was doing that really from like 2013 to about 20. 18 just listening to podcasts doing it on youtube i haven't read a ton of books on it but i was kind of learning it real time then i started the cosmic keys podcast with my former co-host uh scarlet ravenswood who is like a witchy youtuber we were both living in chicago um we were we would hang out and get coffee and talk about the occult and like crazy <laughs> wow um, sounds like a nice date yeah and it was um at a certain point it was just like yeah if we had a podcast we could do this like sh she could read tarot i could do the astrology and then it just literally unfolded really quickly and we started it on the uh, the winter solstice of 2018 then we did it for a full year in chicago i ended up moving to colorado at uh, the very beginning of 2020 we did a, a year remotely the issues of 2020 came forward. I was kind of a loud mouth kind of railing on the whole pandemic bullshit. Um, and sooner or later, she like, it was hard to do it remotely with the two of us remote. And so she stepped away this summer and then I, I just kept it going. I call it cosmic keys 2.0. So now it's just me and I don't shy away from, conspiracy or controversy that's i mean that's kind of how i got in the circle of union of the unwanted because i wanted to interview like charlie robinson and um oh what, ricky he Miranda's, is so, you know? they're, all those guys are so knowledgeable and fascinating and so easy to talk to and they do such a good jo job of like taking their area of exper expertise and kind of like putting it in layman's terms that's what totally, i like about yeah them. yeah so i mean you know it started off as like an, a, a tarot and astrology focused show. So we were talking to like internet witches and stuff like oh, that. Wow. I'm still yeah. down. For, I, I'm still, that is still my bread and butter to an extent, but I'm just like, you know, you, I have a platform. I want to talk about current events and I want to talk about how crazy this world is. Um, so that's kind of where it's at now. It's still astrology. It's still esoteric, but it, I really want to talk about, current events and just whatever I find interesting too. So it sounds like what you're saying is that your study into astrology helped to explain the events of 2020. Oh yeah. Yeah. I moved, I left Chicago because I knew 2020 was going to be such a crazy year. And I was like, I have nothing to lose. Like if the world goes crazy, I don't want to be in a city. <laughs> so, and I was just getting sick of living in the city anyways. Uh, but yeah, I mean, I made that decision mainly based on astrology and it was a really good decision at the time. So you moved from what city and now you're in Colorado from Chicago. Oh, I'm from Chicago. Chicago. Okay. Yeah. And I went to college in Colorado, so I have roots here and um, love it here. I'm in yeah. Breckenridge. So you look um, more to me like a Colorado mountain man than, than a Chicago deep dish boy. You know, I feel yeah. like <laughs> the beard, it's all working. Yeah. I love, I mean, don't get me wrong. I love Chicago. Um, and there's so many, like only recently am I sort of missing the urban lifestyle, but it was just getting so freaking gentrified and generic like every cool neighborhood is just has like a target starbucks condo building that's like uh, shit architecture and i'm like okay i like the his the culture the history the ethnic yep. neighborhoods and stuff but gentrification and yuppie people um i was those just are, like why the hell am i people, here those are your people dan you those, <laughs> come on that's <laughs> It's all your, it's your people's fault. Yeah, I know. Yeah. I know. Um, I lived in Williamsburg for a time 
And uh, once the Starbucks and the Dunkin' Donuts started going up, and I was like, oh, I love me some Dunkin' Donuts, but I was like sad to see it. But I lived in Williamsburg, and oh my God, 20, I moved out, I don't know, it was 26, so it was 11 years ago. Da, da, da. What is that? Quick, what's the math? 2014? Like 20, 20, 2011. 2011, 2011, that's when I moved out. Yeah, and Williamsburg was still like Williamsburg was getting cool like 2005, 2006. And then I was still yeah. there during like the kind of, you know, less gentrified time, but started. I used to read like Pitchfork and all those bands were from there back then and I remember even though I didn't live there, I was like, "Oh, Williamsburg, that's where it's at." But now it's like yuppie tech bro, like hipster yeah. families. <laughs> yeah, there's no like edge or I don't know the the cult the cool culture that I moved in there for is gone. And you know what it is that the culture kind of moves around. It's it's you know mm -hmm. nothing is stationary. Um, so that was really cool that you knew that 2020 was going to be a shit show. You moved out. W were you telling friends and family that this was coming up? Were people not believing you? I can't imagine that it's it's probably hard to be a dude talking about astrology because it's a topic that a lot of people just like blow off in general unless you're into it yeah well it, i i was never into like the sun signs like what's your birthday are you a libra oh <laughs> like like i showed you your chart earlier you know that's a pretty complex set of data so it i mean real astrology is kind of more like like I have an economics major so my brain like that um the data the graphs it actually um, is just a lot of data. You're analyzing data, but um, when I only told a handful of people, like of good friends, they don't, they're not interested in astrology, but they, you know, they're open enough to it. And later on in the year, they're like, damn, you were right. Like, how did they're like, is 2021 going to be any better? I'm like, not much better. Nah. So really wow this is so neat okay so yeah we did mention before um that reading someone's natal chart is in terms of like astrology and figuring out a person uh your sun sign even though it's that's what we see in in, in magazines like that's the shorthand it's like okay it's it's easy to read a paragraph this is the week you're gonna have or the year you're gonna have because you're a gemini of course it's like it's so much more involved and deeper to look at somebody's natal chart and then you can what you have a better sense of patterns or like the natal chart is basically like where all the planets were when you were born and mm -hmm. to, to create a natal chart you need the time of day you were born you need the location so you can figure out like i guess lat latitudinal longitudinal lines you need obviously the day the month the year um and yeah so then when you get all that information, it I guess some people have software that charts the graphs for you. I don't know if that's what you have, Dan. Um, but if you want to put up on the screen what you what you get after you put all this information in, and that gives you your natal chart, which yes, yeah, so you want me to share yours? Yeah. Yeah, let's do that. So you can see that now. Yeah. Okay, sweet. So yeah, this is this is your birth chart. Um wow. and so basically like the I created this actually it's actually a free app that's on my phone. It's called Time Passages, and I really recommend that because um Time Passages tells you, you know, the what the current planets are at any given time. Um you can create your own chart and it gives you like explanations for everything and it's it's pretty well laid out but this is a, a birth chart and it's basically a wheel with 12 sections within it so astrology is really geometric at the end of the day and i think that's kind of how it works it's almost like sacred geometry in a way yeah. um it reminds me of like you know obviously the clock on a wall or even in music, there's like the circle of fifths. So there's something like really harmonious about the way astrology works. Um, 
So there's, you know, it's divided into 12 sections, which is basically like the entire sky above is just equally divided into 12 sections where it's 30 degrees within each section. So it's 360 degrees. So the entire sky is basically covered. And then you pretty much just map where the planets are. Um, the signs of the Zodiac are based on the seasons of the year. So the first, um, the first sign in the astrological year is Aries and that happens on the spring equinox. And then, so it's basically like the same thing as the 12 months of the year. Um, so it's very mathematical and divided up each sign of, of the Zodiac is one of four elements air, earth, fire, or water. Um, fire and air are considered masculine and water and earth are considered feminine. Hmm. So, you know, it's, it's all, it's, it shows a lot of like duality, you know, like, um, anytime you look at one sign of the Zodiac. So for you, you're Scorpio rising. So you put this in this, the section one, right here if you were born like two hours later <laughs> you would be a sagittarius rising wow. and then the sagittarius sign would be in section one so yeah, everything would be like it would be like if you turn the wheel and cranked it one notch over that's why your rising sign is so important and that's why um like you need the birth an accurate birth time to really analyze the chart um but when you're looking at this wheel you know like scorpio is in section one on your chart and then opposite of that is taurus so there's definitely like a duality between anything that's opposite on yeah. the wheel um and it's all kind of just like you know relationships between positions on this wheel and the way in which um the way in which like the position creates a relationship between the different planets in each of these sections so like if we're looking at your chart here you know like i said we have the um the signs on the outside and scorpio is a water sign so in this chart it's blue right here and that's in the first house so the houses are um, the areas of life that we use to sort of analyze the chart. So house, the houses of one through 12 all have like significations, like categories of the areas of life. So I guess to go through really quick, like the first house represents you as the individual. So it's kind of like the first house I think is one of the most important houses and you have um, four planets in the first house. So you have a lot of planets highlighting the first house. So that kind of just makes you an individualistic type of person. Um, there's a lot of emphasis in, in your chart on you as the individual. And then you kind of build it from there. So the second house represents your um, material things like finances, the things you acquire in life. Third house is related to communication and siblings. Fourth house is. Wait, let's go back. This is the third house right here. The third house is um this the third section down. Why from is it first. empty? <laughs> well, yeah, you. I mean, there's a lot of empty because there's only I so have many no planets. communication, which is like I've been working on. That's been a struggle in my life is working on. Well, no, I I will say that um having an empty house does not mean you're lacking in any ways. And this is not the only thing representing communication. In fact, um, I I'll get to like the, the communication for you because you're going through um, what's known as a nodal return right now. And for you, it's in the, the sign of Gemini, which is related to communication and um, yeah, but we'll get there. But just to kind of briefly like go through the, what the 12 houses are. First house is you, the self. Second house is finances and material things. Third house is communication and siblings. Fourth house is your home and your family and your domestic life. 
Fifth house is pleasure, creativity, um, leisure, games, and children. So that's like a fun house. Sixth house is health and routine and daily work. Seventh house is marriage, relationships, partnerships. Eighth house is death, sex. Um, it's related to other people's money because it's opposite of the second mm -hmm. house. Cool. Ninth house is like uh, travel, long distance travel, foreign cultures, culture, philosophy. Tenth house is your career. Eleventh house is your community. And twelfth house is is related to um, kind of isolation and um, spiritual things. It's the it's like the very end of the wheels before it gets back to the first house is the individual. So the the twelfth house is like a spiritual house and a very in, um, introspective kind of hermit space. So that's the houses, and and because you are Scorpio rising, your first house is Scorpio. Your second house is Sagittarius, third house is Capricorn, and then so on. So like the order of the Zodiac corresponds with the order of the 12 houses. So that's kind of why the birth time is so important. And your birth time makes you a Scorpio rising. And so the symbolism of Scorpio, like if you just knew your birthday was in November, you knew you were Scorpio you understood the basics of being a Scorpio. For most people, there would be there would be less emphasis on being a Scorpio. But you have you have what's known as a stellium in the sign of Scorpio. So you have four planets piled up in Scorpio. So you're really Scorpio. Mm -hmm. um, <laughs> and you know the I remember you had an episode with um, Micah Dank where he was talking about. Do you know I went to school with Mickey Dank? Do you <laughs> it, know? And funny, I was yeah. I wanted to bring this up so bad. And I was like, don't be unprofessional, Chrissy. But I invited Mickey Dank. And that's why I can't even call him Micah because it's like I know him as Mickey. And I invited him to my childhood gymnastics birthday party. I think I was turning nine or eleven or ten. I was very young. Mickey Dank came to my party, did not bring me a birthday present. Instead, it came with a briefcase. I'm like, what child has a briefcase? <laughs> And I've never gotten over it. And I like the podcast was going to be my time to call him out and be like, where's my fucking birthday present? But I'm supposed to be bigger than that and over it. But I guess I'm not. <laughs> That's funny. Well, yeah, he was he was talking about on that episode kind of about how um, the symbolism of the Zodiac is related to like the time of the year, you know, and I I, I think that's really worth noting, like. The time of the year for Scorpio is the time when everything dies. It's when the leaves, like Libra, Libra is the very beginning of fall. It's from late September to um, the end of October. And that's when, you know, and Libra is ruled by Venus, the planet of beauty. Oh, yeah. And, and that is when fall is like very colorful and beautiful, you know, and then... Mm -hmm. Venus also rules Taurus. That's kind of when things are blooming. So there's beauty. Scorpio is basically like after all those leaves fall off, there's not as much color and you're just like, everything's dead. You're thinking <laughs> about death. So it's spooky. It's, um, it's Scorpio. The sign is a water sign. It's fixed water. So it's like going really deep into your subconscious where there's kind of scary things hidden down there but the the theme of scorpio is death and rebirth so it's transformation and it's it's ruled traditionally by mars so scorpio is um comfortable with death and it's all about like going deep down facing facing pain facing trauma and then feeling those intense feelings and then being reborn from that experience to become more powerful. So it's, yeah, it's I love crying. Like I just, 
Yeah. I love crying. Like I love watching like whether it's like a sad dog rescue video on Instagram or like I was just telling you before listening to old voicemails from my mom who died two years ago. So it's like mm -hmm. I just like I know I and I listen to it to like hear her voice again. But then it's like certain ones will just hit me and I'll just like sob. But it's like you have to embrace that. And like I've been all about like that's why I like like change is cool and like ch and, yeah. and, and pe most people resist change but i'm like no what's next what's next like somebody fucks you over good they're seeing themselves out of your life you know and yeah it's scorpio is the most real it's it's like you you don't sugarcoat things with scorpio it's also about mysteries and hidden things like scorpio is like the detective of the zodiac um and it's it's interesting too. You have so your ascendant. You're you're born right when the the furthest out planet is Pluto, and Pluto is a really powerful planet. That's kind of a generational planet. You have Pluto conjunct your ascendant, so you have your ascendant at zero degrees Scorpio, which is right at the very beginning of the sign, and Pluto was right there at the moment you were born so you you have pluto conjunct your ascendant in scorpio now pluto is like a generational planet so what um, does that mean because so, of its orbit it only comes around once every it so it takes the sun a month to move through each sign you know because there's 12 months of the year and it takes the sun one month to move through each sign it takes pluto like 15 to 20 years to move through each sign so you could say anybody with pluto in scorpio i call them a, a millennial so right okay pluto, yeah so you were born right when pluto entered scorpio um and you happen to be a Scorpio rising with Pluto conjunct your ascendant. And so that just means that the theme, like the power, the powers of the planet Pluto are like hitting you as an individual right on the money, like directly. And Pluto is like really intense. It's, it's literally about, you can like when you're describing Pluto, it's very similar to when you're describing the sign of Scorpio. So Pluto is like, all about um hidden inner power that you have to like die to receive or you have to like, not literally die but you have to like throughout your life and actually i have pluto conjunct the ascendant in scorpio as well you're like one of the first people i've met that has this but you know you have to, you have to embrace change because throughout your entire life Pluto is if if you resist change and transformation you're going to suffer if you embrace it you're going to become more, gradually more powerful and individuated so like the but it's 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 about like it's not pretty it's about pain and trauma and suffering so um you know we all have traumas but based on your chart it's like trauma is kind of like your food in a way like <laughs> <laughs> it's like it, oh i don't it, know if you would call like 16 day jobs you know <laughs> trauma yes. I, it's so funny what you're saying about like death and rebirth because the most like my i was telling you before my mom died um august of 2018 and after after i mean it was the worst thing i've gone through to date so mm -hmm. very painful horrible still cry about it very much like uh have regrets you know should have been with her her last month so many things um but like but, those those but, difficult feelings yeah but actually after, make you stronger but and after she died all of this space opened up in my my head and my heart and in my life because i had spent just a lot of emotions like worrying about her and like you know like sometimes as a, as a kid you end up being the one who takes care of your parents emotionally and like i was i was big doing that for like my mom my sister it was just was like oh but it's my job to make people feel better so that's my value and like when she passed all this space opened up and what flooded in was like everything i wanted for myself so i've seen like mm -hmm. crazy growth in my career and my goals in the last two years like right when she died so it's weirdly like such a huge benefit of of her like leaving me in the in the physical form. Yeah, and I mean that's that's the theme of death like um and another thing that you have 
is the north node in the eighth house the eighth house is very similar to the sign of scorpio um and it, it's all about transformation so the north node and the south node they're these little horseshoe things here so those are points in the sky where if there's a full moon or a new moon close to them then there will be an eclipse so it's like the eclipse point and eclipses are really intense and they're all about karma so like the um the north node which is the right side up horseshoe thing is what you're being drawn towards it's what it's what this life is pulling you towards it's your destiny and the south node is the opposite of that it's what you have it's what they say you have like past life experience with oh cool so that i mean that all fits um the just the theme of being open to transformation being like not embracing trauma but being able to process trauma because you know like when you're talking about oh i had this horrible experience um when your mother died but then it opened things up you know it's like that's like the prize you get for enduring that and because i also have pluto I'm also Scorpio rising with Pluto conjunct the ascendant. Um, and every time I go through something really difficult, like sometimes like excruciatingly difficult or literally physically painful. Like I like I broke my neck in college and that yeah. like but that kicked me off in like my entire spiritual quest, you know? Wow. So it's it's sort of like anytime something horrible happens and you get to the other side of it, you're just like I wouldn't take that back because I'm better now. So yeah. that's definitely the, th the theme and the themes of Scorpio for you are just strong because even when you look at your chart, you're like, Oh, my third house is empty. What, why are all these empty houses? It's like, cause you're the highlight. The focus is really the first house. You use the individual under the themes of Scorpio, which is death and rebirth and transformation. So other than like Pluto being on your ascendant, you have the sun there. So the sun is like your ego, your identity. And then you have Mercury there too. So Mercury is the, the way you think and the way you communicate. So all of these themes of Scorpio, um, you can articulate them and communicate them. And you, and just the things with Scorpio in general, like it's like, it's what's hidden. It's what's secret. Scorpios are good at keeping secrets. Scorpios are good at being stealth um it's like the detective like have you ever, did you ever watch twin peaks <laughs> no but like i know of that show yeah that that's a really scorpionic show um, oh man i gotta watch it, it okay it's like they, that guy's like a detective and um he he's very scorpio because um like you're you're willing to look into the shadows kind of you know like and that can include your own psyche like it could be like looking at yourself and being real with yourself like it's all it's the stuff that's not pretty or the stuff that most people wouldn't would shy away from but scorpios can be like scorpios can know that um there's sort of treasures there or there's just power there. It's, it's it's Pluto in particular is about power, hidden power. And it's like, it's, it's like, yeah, you went, you suffered when your mother died and felt you felt through it. You didn't shy away for it from it or repress it. You felt it. And then it's just like this, like tr transform transformation that happens. And then when you're on the other side, you're like, you feel way cleansed and just like powerful to be able to yeah i would make like a, a, a like a crying playlist i'd be like let's do this <laughs> <laughs> sia yeah. sia is so good to cry to like her whole whatever it was like whatever album it was that was out like two years ago i was like oh every song this is great i'm, I'm feeling this because like you could spend your whole life avoiding your feelings avoiding your darkness and that's the thing is like i think recognizing my own darkness helps me to like be a force of good in recognizing it in the world mm -hmm. i don't know if that sounds like too kooky but um no that's it's, it's, that's totally accurate and um you also have um saturn there and saturn 
there's like the seven traditional planets. Um, those correspond to the seven days of the week. And those are like what you can see with the naked eye in the sky. And then there's the outer planets that were discovered later. So like the ancients who created the system of astrology didn't know about Pluto, Uranus, or Neptune. Um, but Saturn is the furthest out visible planet. So Saturn is like father time. It's all about restrictions, boundaries, um, patience, responsibility. It's like the old man, you know, then hmm. it's like, you're going to learn this lesson the hard way, the slow way. So it's, it's slowness and it's, it's like heavy energy. So anybody that has, um, Saturn and Scorpio, I, th I always, everybody that I've done readings for had very intense Saturn returns. Are you familiar with the Saturn, the concept of a Saturn the return? The Saturn return happens when you're what, around 28? Is yeah, that correct? It's, it's when you're like 28, 29. Um, and it's based, you get, you get two to three Saturn returns per life. So you have Saturn and Scorpio and it took 20, eight years for Saturn to do a loop around the Zodiac and come back to Scorpio. And that happened in like 24, 2013, 2014. Oh yeah. It, that was a lot. Wow. Yeah. Cause yeah. everybody I talk, cause not only did you, you know, you Saturn and Scorpio. Slut. I had a big breakup and I was a huge slut for like a month. <laughs> yeah. Cause I mean, people, people that are around your age, um, have Saturn and Pluto in Scorpio. So everybody that I've talked to that has Saturn in Scorpio had a really intense Saturn return back then. Um, so that I, yeah, I, I'm always curious how that happens. Like I've talked to people that I've talked to multiple people who lost their parents around that time. Oh man. Um, but it's, it's similar too. it's like your Saturn return. It teaches you that lesson. And that's when you officially leave adolescence behind and really come into adulthood hmm. um wow. and so that happened you know around the time you turned 30 um but yeah like the um just the, when i at first glance when you look at your chart you're like there's a big pile up in scorpio in the first house so that just says i'm um, in a nutshell the themes of scorpio are really important to you individuality is really important to you because it's in the first house and the first house is just powerful in general um the the signs themselves are in cat are in three different categories um and scorpio leo taurus and aquarius are considered fixed signs so those are in like the middle of the season um the cardinal signs are uh Libra, Capricorn, Aries, and Cancer. Those are like the beginning of the season. So Libra is the beginning of fall. Mm -hmm. Aquarius, or I'm sorry, Capricorn, the beginning of winter. Aries, the beginning of spring. And Cancer, the beginning of summer. So those are like initiating. Those are cardinal energies. It's like kicking off something new. Softer, yeah. And then the fixed is like sturdy in the middle, like the, like it's the middle of the season it's stable and it's it's known for stubbornness too um <laughs> so like your sun is in scorpio and your moon is in aquarius and um aquarius is also a fixed energy so your sun you know the three basic things in a chart that kind of just to sum yourself up are usually your um sun moon and rising so your sun is in scorpio your rising is in Scorpio and then your moon is in Aquarius. Um, so the moon, we were talking about emotions and stuff and crying, feeling the moon, the sun is like your ego, which is more of the masculine force. It's like how, how um, you identify and it's kind of like your soul's purpose, but the moon is like the feminine side. It's the yin energy where the sun is the yang energy and with the moon being in Aquarius, you know, it's it's actually not because Aquarius is an air sign and air represents like intellect. It's actually not super emotional. Like the, the, the pileup in Scorpio indicates emotionality for sure and like deep, dark emotions. 
but actually like the the mood like the the moon is kind of like your inner self your body and your emotions that's like flowing within you which is in contrast to the sun which is like your your ego and your identity and kind of the the more of like the way the world sees you okay yeah um, but having a moon in aquarius too like aquarius is very sort of like quirky um curious like sci scientific in a way that this the symbol of um like and we're entering into like a big aquarian era i would say we had a an alignment with um saturn and jupiter in aquarius on the winter solstice this year and um so you you know you have a big pile up in scorpio and then your moon is in aquarius um so the fixed signs are more important to you not only because you're a scorpio rising because you have a lot of planets and fixed signs and when you're looking at the houses in the wheel i the the most important houses for anybody's charts are the first fourth seventh and tenth first wow. is use the individual yours is in scorpio fourth is the actual home you're in and also your family you're like um it's the domestic space so you have the moon in that fourth house in aquarius so your emotional well-being is connected to home and family so if ever your emotions are kind of out of ch out of whack you know the domestic space or just your home your sanctuary is kind of where you'll find better emotional stability um and you know the the moon is a feminine planet as well um this and then the seventh house in taurus the seventh house is opposite of the first house so the first house is use the individual seventh house is partnerships of any kind the most obvious one is marriage like uh romantic partnerships um so like use a scorpio ride uh, scorpio in the first house the your partner um has a very like partnership has like a a taurus energy to it and that is like Taurus is an earth sign. It's ruled by Venus. Taurus is sensual. It's physical. So like partnership for you has that energy of, um, you know, the scent, the five senses. It's like touch, smell. Taurus is all about like good tasting food, like yeah. physical things, you know? And yeah, the finer great. things in life, like the comforts of home, but like nice things. <laughs> exactly. It's luxury. Yeah. It's it's things that you can experience. It's not like ideas, you know. Um, it's it's physical things that taste good, smell good, feel good on your, your skin. It's like decadent, you know, and it's physical. It's a Taurus is great. So like your your partnerships um have that coloring to them you know and then your 10th house is the career like the 10th house is at the top of the chart your career and it's not all, like the sixth house down here is more like your work like your daily the daily grind nutrition health wellness and daily monotonous routine is the sixth house the 10th house is like career in the highest sense like what you're remembered for hmm. um yeah, and your that, purpose. That's Leo for you. And Leo, I, I mean, Leo loves the stage. Leo is a leader. It's a fire sign ruled by the sun. Um, Leo is creative and it's the king energy. It's the royal, like, sun king energy. Um, and Leo's love to be the center of attention. And, you know, so your career you should be seen you should be performing you should be in a leadership role rather than like having a boss sort of uh, I've, I've always hated having a boss <laughs> yeah like i love working with people but i hate like being told what to do yeah and um so yeah like the the first fourth seventh and tenth are kind of the most important parts of the chart and any anytime anything happens in the sky um in any of the fixed signs like we're in aquarius season right now um so you as like a more fixed sign person that affects you more um 
Another another cool thing about your chart off the bat. Um, so in traditional astrology, there's the two benefic planets, which are Venus and Jupiter, and the two, and then there's the two malefic planets, which are Mars and Saturn. And every planet has its like favorite sign to be in or its mm-hmm. least favorite sign to be in. And the two benefic planets, the two planets that just basically help you out, they rarely screw you over. They're, the energies of those planets are good. Venus and Jupiter are both in their favorite sign. So Venus is in Libra and Jupiter is in Sagittarius. So that's just like a good thing, you know. Venus is that luck is that like luck per se? Jupiter is luck for sure. Uh, Venus can definitely be lucky. Um, but Jupiter is Jupiter is like the um ex- Jupiter is comparable to Saturn. Like Saturn is restriction and Jupiter is expansion. So Jupiter blows things up and makes them bigger. It's very lucky. Saturn is unlucky and constricts and you know saturn is like when you run out of money in your bank account and jupiter is when you just randomly get a deposit you weren't expecting Mm -hmm. um but jupiter is in sagittarius in your second house which rules money actually um and venus is in libra in your 12th house so you know that that just says of all these planets the two benefic planets for you are strong. So um, Venus as a planet represents your, um, it represents relationships in general. So if you have a strong Venus, you are more relationship centric. Um, You connect well with others. Libra, the sign, Libra, the sign is opposite of Aries, the sign. Aries is ruled by Mars. V, uh, Libra is ruled by Venus. So there's like that duality. And Venus um, being in a strong sign of Libra just kind of shows that relationship wise, you're good. At, you can find the balance. The symbol of Libra is the two scales, you know. And Aries is opposite of Libra. So Aries is the ram that's just like self-centered um, and masculine and just like ready to go to war. Mm-hmm. It's like me, me, me. It's the first sign in the Zodiac. So it's kind of like the baby. It's like the terrible. Aww. It's kind of like the terrible baby that doesn't care about anyone. But <laughs> I did. I dated an Aries and it was like, it's exactly what you're describing. It was like all about him. I was the one going to visit him and he was like outbursts and, but it very excitable, like fun in those ways too. But just yeah, nobody yeah. And, existed, but him. And Libra is the scales. It's, it's like um, a fine balance. It's like, let's, let's meet in the middle. Let's balance things out. Me and you, it's not me, 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 it's me and you. So, I mean, that, does, that symbol of Libra, um, it, it's, it's, it just shows like that you have that power as th- that that's a good place for Venus to be. Um, it's a good indicator of just relationships in general, and it's a good place for uh, Venus to be. So that's cool. And it's also in a, you know how you were asking about the relationships between all these lines here. Mm-hmm. So Libra, or I'm sorry, Venus is in a trine with your moon. So that's also a very pleasant aspect because Venus and the moon are the two feminine planets, you know, Um, and they're in a flowing relationship, which is known as a trine. Um, Aspects in astrology are like these relationships where they are in the wheel. So um, Libra, Gemini, and Aquarius are the three air signs. And anytime two planets are at close degrees of the same element in this case air they flow really nicely with each other so not like you have a connection between venus which is like your relationship energy um with the moon which is your emotional energy and they help each other and they they're in sync because 
Venus is at two degrees of Libra and the moon is at four degrees of Aquarius and they're both the air element. So they just flow. And so that's oh. a really, that's a helpful thing. And the other, the other thing I mentioned earlier about Jupiter being like the good luck planet, it's yeah, it's in, it's the good luck planet in his, one of his favorite signs, which is Sagittarius in the second house, which represents money and resources. Um, so Jupiter is, is just like a very, um, good fortune, good luck planet in general. So, you know, with your relationship with money and material things, you have three planets in this house. You have Jupiter, which is one of the traditional planets. Then you have Uranus and Neptune, which are outer planets. So one of, one of the things I wanted to talk about is kind of your, your relationship with money and, um, material things kind of because you like i said earlier you have the south node in the second house and which is north. past life i think i heard yeah. in, a, in a reading like in a past life i was bad with money well like, i would no i would actually say in a past life like in a past life you were good with money with money okay. actually okay, maybe i heard the opposite but but maybe it was interpreted differently because your south node is kind of old news. So mm -hmm. it's saying in your past lives, you had a lot of money, you learned how to accumulate money and, and you learned how to um, be good with money and just um, build resources for yourself. And that's kind of boring for you at this point. So you might have it's it, your mm -hmm. south node is kind of like what you're good at when you're younger, but you're okay. being pulled. You're being pulled in the opposite direction. So it might be like, yeah, you were good with money when you were a kid, when you were younger, or maybe you had like steady income and were just like focused on traditional ways of making money. But as you get older, you're moving to the eighth house, which is more like shared resources, and it's in the sign of Gemini. So huh. you're you're becoming more your your finances are becoming more non-traditional it indicates like a non-traditional way of making money that isn't as i don't want to say it isn't as steady but it's more unconventional and it's more like it's less important for you to just build your bank account because I guess in in previous lives you learned how to do that and you're bored with that, so you're moving more towards the eighth house, which is more transformative. And the thing um, that's really important with the uh, the nodes is that right now, with like at your age, the the node the nodes are back to where they were when you were born, and that only happens every eighteen years. So you're in what's known as a nodal return. And um, that started on May 5th of 2020. And it's going to end on January 18th, 2022. And so the last time, so basically every 18 years, the nodes come back to where they were when you were born. And that's really like when we're talking about the nodes and we're saying, yeah, you had this past life with where you were money centric and now you're moving away from that into something new into your destiny hmm. anytime you're in a nodal return period that's when like you're kind of in like a karma reset in a way or it's it becomes very clear where you're heading for the next 18 years um wow yeah because like Right. All throughout, all throughout my twenties, for sure. Always had a day job, never. And it's only now like through starting this podcast that I, that I've started to think like, yeah, other, not, not being other people's, like not being working for other people. What do you want to build? Like, I'm not, I'm not like obsessed. I'm not like money hungry, but it's like, I also just, I don't know. I am yeah, not interested in just working for somebody else. Cause I know I'm well aware of what that looks like. And I don't want to be like a prisoner of that and you were probably good at it like you were probably good at i don't know maybe being financially responsible 
at a younger age. And it's not that you're moving away from that and becoming financially irresponsible. Oh, good. <laughs> like spending. But no, but like the eighth house is like, I heard someone on a YouTube video talk about this. They were saying like, you know, the second house, if, you, if the second house was more highlighted, if you had the North Node in the second house, when you die, you would be like, I... I made X amount of money in this life. I really did it. I did great. The eighth mm -hmm. house is like, you're not, when you die, you're thinking about your accomplishments and not about your finances, you know? Right. So it's kind of more like your, your legacy too. But with, with the North node being in the sign of Gemini in the eighth house, the sign of Gemini is ruled by the planet Mercury and it shows the twins. They're kind of like facing each other, like chit-chatting back and forth. It's like the exchange of information. Mm -hmm. And Mercury is a really fast-moving planet. And it's about communication. It's a So the sign of Gemini, where your north node is, where your destiny is, is related to communication, data, like information. So like words and... um. And it's really fast paced. And Free it's really, speech, right? Yeah, exactly. Like so, like the it 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 is a big deal that you're in your nodal return. Like anybody in their um, late thirties gets gets to that point as well. And the the last one that you had, I think, was around the time you were eighteen. It's like your first nodal return is when you're about eighteen, and then your mm -hmm. second one is when you're like thirty six, thirty seven. Um, but in general, no matter where your nodes are, the nodal return is just a time where you kind of, you're like, I'm, I know where I'm going now. I know what my destiny is. The, I know what the future holds, or you, you just see your path forward. And the way that the North node works, it's like sucking you in that direction. Like it's the North node is pulling you away from the South node. So it's pulling you towards, wow these these communicative like information based um data based like gemini themes and wow. away from away from the sagittarius energy which is more like f 9 to 5 stable yeah yeah exactly so like money is money in this life for you is less important but it's also like the eighth house represents like shared resources so in the old school astrology that would be like getting a will or something like if you inherit some money that's other people's money or it or it could be related to like shared business ventures so like if you it, the the second house is way more just like a conventional way of getting money and the eighth house is like this unconventional like investments or um like sh share like having like a co like owning a business with somebody okay so like new money right yeah and the other thing like in general like i i i know <laughs> i know that you're um like in your comedy and you, on your shows, you, you're very open with talking about sex. Like the eighth house in modern astrology, if you ask a modern astrologer what the eighth house is, they'll just say sex, nothing mm -hmm. else. It, but it's about intimacy. It's about like merging. And because um, the seventh house is just the partnership. And then when you move to the eighth house, a lot of modern astrologers are like, yeah, that's like intimate relationships and sex. Scorpio is also very related to sex. So like with that, with, with your, with the work you do, it's, it's clear that you don't shy away from sex, but I, I would say don't shy away from those topics and think about not just like, like go deep with like, what is sex? Like what's the actual instinctual, like, uh, energy that's like it's like what is the mystery of sex because it's like sex and death is scorpio right. and sex and death is the eighth house where you're you're being pulled in that direction and the, the gemini theme is communicating about it so it's like oh man that's like exactly what i'm doing it's like talking about trauma and change 
and like yeah deeper meanings of like connecting intimacy sex and like yeah as and maybe it's like a i always thought i was like oh as you get older you become wiser and you realize sex is not just about like body parts going in and out of each other it's like i think there's some it's way cooler to me to learn about like sacred energy exchanges and like yeah deep int intimacy shit and also it's like the the taboo it's like the prime i mean that, that's pluto that's scorpio that's the eighth house it's like taboo things that just have so much power like the power behind sex literally like sends man to the moon you know mm. it's, it's like the 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 drive behind everything yeah it's why kamal harris is our vp now come yeah. on man <laughs> yeah so um the um it's it's really it's it's important to know that you're in your nodal return that the nodes came back to where they are where you where you were born so that also means that the eclipses that are happening in gemini and sag are hitting you more right now um I wrote down some dates. So like your the, the north node in Gemini is gonna come back onto it's gonna come back to 16 degrees 14, which is at your natal placement on February 26th. So huh. pay attention to I have Feb a show that day. <laughs> okay, so pay pay attention to like like that, that is that sh whatever happens on that day is going to be related to your destiny. Oh, shit. Okay. Um, I'm going to be, I'm going to be at Comedians of the Compound on February 26th in Royersford, PA. <laughs> but right. Yeah. It's just like maybe it's a phone call. Maybe it's like something else that's been building up. Or it could, I mean, it could just be like, you know, um, how you feel that like what you might just come to a realization that day. You might just be like, I, f I feel you know that i'm in the right place and i'm heading in the right direction cuz that's but i mean that that theme of heading in the right direction applies to this entire period between may 5th 2020 and january 18th 2022 this whole chunk of time um you're going to so you said wait may of 2020 till yeah they they the like in, in 2020 the nodes moved back into gemini on may 5th and then they leave gemini on january 18th next year so like for the next year and for this previous like um since may is this wow. period of time and it's it's generally considered like a good thing you know it's when That's you wild because it was in may where i decided i wanted to do four times a week on this podcast and i was like really gonna beef it up and like commit yeah, and Gemini is podcasts. Like you're you're speaking, you're you're sending this out into the internet. It's fast paced. You put out a lot of content, and you know it's quick and it's words and it's communicate. You're communicating, you know, and that's what that's what this whole thing is, and that's what this lifetime really is. Um, you're getting you're getting pulled that direction. Like the universe pulled you into podcasting more communicating more talking about the eighth house themes you know sucking you away from the second house like nine to five trap and bringing you into this more unconventional um way of making money and like if you feel if you ever just feel bored with money that's kind of a good sign you know like Huh, right. Cause you're not like, if you're like that, this is so true because like the times where I've been the worst with money is you're just, it's a horrible feeling. You're watching your bank account. You're like, do I have enough for rent? What do I have to scrape together? It's like, you're obsessing about, you're obsessing about not having enough money. And we all know whatever you think about expands, whatever you obsess about kind of there is more created. And if not that you don't care about money, but if you're not operating in a lack mentality, I yeah. think that's that's abundance can flow in easier. Yeah, and when I'm tr when I try like all of all of astrology, you're trying to like synthesize as much as you can because we're looking at this wheel with all these data points, and you're like, how do I just sum it all up and wrap a bow around it? But it's like, yeah, like don't 
fall back into the nine to five trap. Oh, it's such a trap, man. It's so stable. And, and, and just like it, as you're, as the theme of communicating, whether you're on stage or whether you're behind a microphone podcasting, like keep going that direction, keep communicating and, and also keep like the themes we talked about with Scorpio and with the eighth house, go deep embrace sex. embrace the sex and death themes and the hit the the taboo the realness like the raw real hidden deep underground emotional stuff that's kind of where your gold is and that yeah. could include conspiracy too that could include talking about the lizard the freaking lizard pedophile people. lizard yeah. people because <laughs> that's yeah. that's like yeah. a doesn't get darker than that or yeah and i mean more secretive yeah so i mean clearly like i mean you're you I, I listen to your show and you you cover a lot of ground and it's great um but don't shy away from the the uncomfortable scary topics Ooh, and yeah okay and and just like the real raw topics too and you know you you've talked with porn stars I know and stuff like that. And like, you talk about only fans, like a lot of people would shy away from that and be like, yeah, that's not um, appropriate or something, but there's so much like wisdom. There in, is in that it's, realness, you know, especially in that lat, like not to interrupt you, especially in this last episode I did with, a, with these three comics that were like comics first. And then went into only fans. One does like, Sovereign Sire that's doing porn for 10 years. Wendy Starling was like doing sex work, like escorting, whatever, but also comedy. Hilarious. One of my good friends. And then Keanu Thompson, brand new into doing OnlyFans. And what was so interesting to me was this concept that they are like, Sovereign brought this up, this concept of being a fantasy architect and the way she was describing how she, how she shoots her videos to convey like a certain fantasy. Like it was brilliant. She was talking about like oh she's just shaving her legs and she sets everything up to 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 be where the viewer is spying on her it's like she creates a whole world around what the viewer is looking at and it was the most creative thing i was like this goes to me so far beyond like i'm just and then kiana's like i sold a picture of my asshole for a thousand dollars so i like exploring like the full uh like scope of it really because yeah because i, I mean I've never been big on just judging people for, um, you know, it's like some people are like, they'll judge a bit. We were selling your intimacy. You're selling the deepest parts. I'm like, not everybody feels that way. Some people think sex is fun and it's, and it's like, uh, fluid. So <laughs> literally. Yeah. Well, so, and even it makes me think of like, it's so like it, whatever, mo like when you think about like kinks and stuff like that, like what, whatever is causing people to get such a uh, response from something so random sometimes lives deep, deep down. And when you're yeah. Scorpio eighth house energy, you want to understand what is down there. And then when you understand that you can kind of like, when you bring, when you become conscious of like all of these, like of the libido force like what the heck? like that's a powerful force and when you uh, when you're sometimes when you're unconscious you could have all these weird uh repressions and like weird ex like problems because you're yeah. not aware like you well, can, so many yeah, people let all that out that. yeah exactly like repressing stuff it's like if you're ashamed of something and you're repressing it's like that's you got to dig it out and explore it and look at it and get it in the light because like it's just gonna become toxic if you ignore it and it's like most of the time it's like ends up not even being a huge deal it's like yeah you have mommy issues or like what what big deal you know it's like a lot of times it's normal stuff you just gotta like look at it don't just yeah, like put so it in the closet it's like the you know the scorpio themes and the eighth house themes that are so prominent in your chart you know it falls under the umbrella of like therapy or trauma or libido or taboo kinks things that people shy mo a lot of people shy away from all that but then you know, I'm similar. I have, uh, I'm, I'm similar. My chart is kind of similar to yours. 
And I'm just like, well, don't you want to fix yourself? Don't you want to like stop having these compulsions that where you're in autopilot and you're just like triggered by something or just like you have to like, it's all about self-awareness and to be self-aware. Yeah. You have to look at ugly taboo stuff Mm -hmm. and in your case, you know, even just by the fact you have Mercury in Scorpio, like talk about and talk about these things. North Node in the eighth house, Gemini, communicate these things, embrace these things. And I think weirdly, that's kind of just like your destiny. You know, that's what the North Node shows is your destiny. And like I said, this year and also on February 26th in particular, like you're going to probably be more aware of that you know cool wow that's really neat and i just thought i was like well i'm doing podcasting because stand-up has dried up and i don't want to get depressed and like i gotta do something i can't be like one of these comics complaining about having no work and i don't know yeah yeah i'm big on just creating for yourself and like create your own momentum like don't wait i spent so many years like in comedy waiting for people to hand me stuff just because I was talented and it's like, no, nah. <laughs> it's like, it's cutthroat. You got to make your own path. Yeah. And I mean, like the more, the more you can just communicate it, the like the, you want, you want it to reach ears, you know, and clearly in 2020, um, you have to be creative. And, and I feel like so many people leveled up in 2020, like inadvertently, hmm. um, yeah. Because they had to get creative with how they were coming up with a new plan. So for sure. And a lot of leveling up like in their awareness, you know, like getting hit with a lot of truths or a lot of truths being exposed. Yeah. Um, really seeing the way our governments work and now the way our financial system works. It's a lot of like, oh wow, a lot of like rude awakenings. But it's good. It's like I think that's great. It's like, yeah, it's change, it's truth it's better than than to like live in the darkness, you know? And like what you were saying before, it's a really good point. Like not being owned by your reactions, you know, like why mm-hmm. not take the power back in yourself? And, and it's like, instead of like, okay, every time I feel ignored, I lash out or I withdraw, you know I mean? Well, now you're letting the part of you that, that with that's withdrawing, like take, taking the wheel of your life. It's like, why don't you just get ahead of that, learn about yourself, and then you can make the choice for how you want to react instead of being um, like a slave to your patterns, I guess. Yeah, exactly. I mean, that, yeah, that's very Scorpio right there. So therapy, man. <laughs> that's so cool. Wait, what's your sun sign? I'm a Leo. I have a lot of Leo and Scorpio. So. It's, it's kind con- there. So in, like, if you look at your chart, you know, Leo, Leo makes a 90 degree angle to Scorpio so that they kind of clash actually. Um, so I have a lot of that Leo energy where, yeah, I love to be Leo, on stage. Be, be honest. Is Leo big dick energy? <laughs> yeah, it kind of <laughs> is. <laughs> it's like Leo uh aries scorpio is too i mean yeah it's so weird yeah i feel like they're all they're all kind of in their own way can be big dick energy but yeah mars okay i I guess i didn't tell you about your mars so mars you know that it's the male symbol it's the it's the warrior masculine projective energy it's also like a malefic planet so it gets you in trouble Mm -hmm. um but you have Mars in Virgo in the eleventh house. Isn't and, Virgo like the anal, like yeah. highway or the highway? Mm-hmm. Um, what do they like things clean? They like things orderly. Yes. So like you have that Virgo thing going on with your Mars. So um, and it's in the eleventh house, which is the house of community. And hmm. um, when I th- what came to mind when I saw your Mars in eleventh house is it's it makes you confrontational. <laughs> with friends and community um and not necessarily in like a bad way but you you could either fight for your community or fight against your community you project your energy for your community so um and That's and then interesting. yeah with, with the virgo energy like you can really um 
you can like express that in that anal Virgo way. So you could be like, you know, I'm mopping the floor. Like you, you like I'm cleaning the house today. You know, you got the, Oh God. Yeah. Sometimes it's so weird when I feel like, uh, like I can't focus or it's like too much screen time or like I, I'm just like in a fog. I sometimes will really like just stop what I'm doing and go clean the bathroom. Cause it's like, mm-hmm. I need order right away. I need something to look better right away. It's, I don't yeah. know. I, I didn't realize that was like a, I mean, I knew it was a Virgo thing, but I just didn't think I had much Virgo in my chart. Yeah. I mean, you have, um, and I, I have no planets in Virgo in my chart, but like, the themes of your place must be a dump. (laughs) It it, it can, it can get to that point, but it's, it's like, it's always for anybody, whether or not you have planets in there, it's always good to like get organized. It's, it's kind of a universal thing, but for you, like by the fact that you have Mars there, um, you know, you're, you can maybe, you can maybe have a better outward expression of, the Mars energy. If you think like a Virgo, you know, hmm. you act like a Virgo. So like, um, or you might just have it at your fingertips. Like if you do need to do the Virgo stuff, you have it at your disposal to like activate your Mars and just like. And get- Mars is the, wait, tell me it. It's, it's masculine. It's, um, is it community? You said, well, the, the, the 11th house, the 11th house. Yeah. So like the, the Mars planet energy is just, your it's really your energy it's your warrior energy it's like it's what gets you out of it's just what drives you forward and it's it's the warrior planet so it's combative it can be confrontational and aggressive but it's how you drive yourself through life so um it's good to know like if you do need to do the virgo stuff you kind of have that as a resource of just like you can kind of tap into the the Mars energy to do that. So if you're going to be confrontational, be organized about your points, I guess. Yeah, totally. Because Virgo is ruled yeah. by Mercury. Um, and Like have your shit together if you're going to have a confrontation. Like know what you're going to say. Know what your truths are. Right, yeah. And it's the, it's the 11th house too. So you can fight on behalf of your community yes free speech and comedy bitches yeah and you might you might find yourself in conflict with the community for sure yes absolutely like i had other people the like the woke side of comedy like saying let's make a list let's make sure we never book this person again because she was in dc on january 6th like because i'm not you know what i mean like it was for six years i ran a show at the stonewall inn uh an lgbt landmark oh yeah but i but i wasn't a queer chick i was like uh i mean yeah i've hooked up with some girls but i would say that i'm i'm a unpracticing bisexual i don't know i don't know what my title is but i wasn't queer enough in their minds to uh, you know i mean like oh a lot of people she doesn't deserve it how dare she it's like because i worked my ass off for this nobody handed it to me like definitely a lot of salty people like why is she in this space if she's not queer um yeah i mean and embrace it tactfully i would say like like it's pick your fights yeah pick your fights and don't be afraid to fight um just because you know that's indicating the the placement there in the 11th house is just indicating um Hmm. conflicts and community but it's not just conflict it's just like it's also just like your expression of energy you know it's like your drive forward so you have a drive right. you can have a drive for the community you can be like i'm gonna fight for this community um fighting for also, things you know, yeah but if you're fighting for it people are still gonna be fighting against you one way or the other but right you still have the attitude like i want to serve the community and i don't give a fuck and you just have that mars attitude i don't give a fuck like i will fight for this right because the cause is bigger than me but i am the target a lot of the times because i will like be representing a greater thing Mm -hmm. that's cool man this is really neat um do you uh, is if someone's listening to this and going wow that's really cool i would like my chart read is this a thing that you offer to people dan that that maybe someone could give you 
money for doing i don't know or or is it more just like you you like to look at you know trends in the world like like i i, I probably next time we do this i'll ask you about like what specifically you saw like coming up for 2020 like do you mostly use astrology to understand the world better or will you like sit down like you did just with me and like run a run through someone's chart yeah it's it's both like on my show um in the introduction i always do kind of like a week ahead so i'll be like hey there's a full moon this week in this sign or um i that's what i do on the show but um i also do like exactly kind of what we just did reading a chart uh you can book on my podcast website it's cosmickeyspodcast.com um it's you know i i i just am kind of like passionate to learn about the esoteric and astrology is a fun way to do it so it's not like my full-time job or anything it but it's just kind of something i do but i'm not against doing it full-time and it, it may get to that point in the future but you need to sort of do it you, like anything you need to do it for a while you need to get a lot of charts under your belt and and it becomes like an intuitive thing like you know i'll i'll remember this conversation and be like oh yeah like there you're just like chrissy mayer you have this too is she she validated that so you're kind of like building on it but oh cool yeah but yeah if anyone wanted to um book a reading they could go to cosmic keys podcast.com Yes, and exactly like this new book I got. Not that I'm like, I have to promote this book, but I'm just using because the example of like they had Oprah's chart and a lot of people know about Oprah. So they were like, oh man, you know what would be so fucking cool to do like uh, almost like conspiracy astrology? Like if you got Gates's chart, Fauci's chart, um, oh. a lot of like the elites, and you were like, oh man, that would be cool. Yeah, Epstein's chart. Epstein's <laughs> chart, Ghislaine Maxwell's chart. I think Jeff people did actually people were doing that with Ghislaine Maxwell and she was in her second Saturn return when she got arrested and there was like a there was definitely some kind of alignment on the day that she got arrested. I know that. Wow. So You're like I see metal bars in your future. <laughs> right, yeah. Hey, I see a rope. No. Um <laughs> This was so interesting. Dan, thank you so much for, I feel like I could easily talk to you another two hours about this stuff. Um, very, very interesting, interesting stuff. Go to cosmickeyspodcast.com if you are interested in maybe some kind of a reading or you want to learn more about Dan's work. Um, find him on the Cosmic Keys podcast. Also, the Union of the Unwanted, which is, I think, twice a month now. Uh, and for me, this is uh, the Chrissy Mayer podcast four times a week. I also do a show on Compound Media called The Wet Spot, where we talk about sex, dating, relationships, and we kind of we sometimes give advice or we do fun like in studio segments. So check that out, Compound Media Mondays at seven thirty. Uh, that's a subscriber network there. And yeah, did I forget anything, Dan? No, that's about it. Um, I guess Instagram. I'm at Cosmic underscore keys underscore podcast and twitter it's at cosmic keys 777 but cool. yeah thanks for having me chrissy yeah. it's been fun we'll have to do this again because i'm going to get into like numerology stuff too i mean this there's so much to this this whole world and uh mm -hmm. i just find it like endlessly fascinating so this was great we'll have to do it again thanks dan thank you bye